Do you think you made the right move by doing what you love? I don't know. <laughs> What's up everybody, welcome to my Q&A slash AMA slash whatever you want to call it. This is basically just a video where I answer the questions that you've sent to me and I'll just be, yeah, answering it. I can't, I can't explain this anymore. I'm just, an I answer questions, that's it. Since my last Q&A video, a lot has changed in my life. Like I've quit my job, I started filmmaking full time, uh, I work from home now, so my entire lifestyle is just very different. I've had to like motivate myself to actually work and I do client work and I'm doing these YouTube videos pretty much full time. And so a lot of you have been reaching out to me asking questions personally, which I love and on my videos and I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just have one video where I answer your questions right here and give you a terrible answer that you can watch later and be disappointed with. So let's get straight to it. Actually, I need my fake microphone, which isn't plugged into anything because I like having a prop on set. So, thank you. Let's begin. Why do you wear t-shirts all the time? Excellent question. I watched a video by Matt Diavella where he talks about how he simplified his wardrobe to basically a t-shirt, a pair of jeans, and that's it. And it's the same solid color t-shirt that he wears Pretty much every day, he does have different colors, but you know, whatever. And the reason why I really like this was because even though it seems like a small choice, choosing your clothes can actually be kind of difficult. I mean, I've always had times where like, I'm like, I don't know if I should wear this or this, and then I wear something and I regret it later on. And you know, just having that kind of, that moment where, you know, you have to choose, it's just, it's just, I don't know, it's not something I enjoy. So I wanted to simplify my wardrobe exactly like Matt and it's worked really well. Now I just, you know, I wear solid color t-shirts. I don't really have to choose. I just pick a t-shirt and just get straight to do whatever I need to do that day. And you should try it. It's actually pretty cool. It's pretty great. And uh, it's easy too. And you save money. So. What mic and editing software do you use? Top notch quality. For audio, I use a Rode Video Micro. Now you could put this on top of your camera, but I like to connect it to a boom pole and have it plugged directly into the camera. Um, it's much, the audio is much better when it's closer to the subject, that way, you know, it's just crisper and clearer and it actually sounds like the person's there, whereas if the mic was on the camera right now, you wouldn't really be able to hear me as well. A lot of people like to use lav mics, and lav mics are great, but the problem is, is that sometimes, especially on client work, the audio is either too high or too low, and then it just really doesn't sound that great afterwards, and it's really hard to monitor, whereas a boom mic, it's just a lot easier. Uh, to work with later on and, you know, easier is better, right? For client work, I usually plug in the microphone straight to my Zoom H1 audio recorder and then I sync up the audio and the video in post. For editing, I use Final Cut Pro, which is a great software, but I did use iMovie a lot when starting these vlogs and it is a good software, it's just a little bit limited, but I would say that iMovie is definitely a great stepping stone to Final Cut Pro, but I love Final Cut Pro. I've done a lot of great things. There's so much, so many plugins, sorry, that are on there and you can download. Where did you find the courage to do something on your own? I don't know if I could say I had the courage to make this decision. I think I was just going to move on from my job anyways, and it was just whether I was either just gonna get another job or try to start my own thing. And I've been really dying to start some my own business, just so many reasons why. And I thought rather than wait, you know, five, 10, 15 years from now, why not start it now while I, you know, have the chance? And I think when you realize that and you realize kind of what you want, what kind of lifestyle you want and all that, then you feel a little bit more comfortable taking the decision. It was, it was a matter of whether it was now or later and I think I didn't want to wait until later. I thought let's just get it over with now. But I will admit that um, when I put in my resignation and the moments leading up to my final day, I was incredibly nervous and was about to change my mind and just continue working. So I don't know if I could say I had any courage because, um, you know, if it wasn't for Salwa, my wife, I probably would have stayed working at my previous job. How do you promote yourself? That's a really good question. I think it depends on what kind of strategy you want to take. 
I love connecting with people. I love learning more about people and I love the whole community aspect of social media. So what I try to do, I don't know if I do it well, but what I try to do is try to engage with my followers rather than just push stuff at them. I've read a lot of marketing books where you know you should make it more of a engagement thing rather than just pushing stuff towards your audience, you know, because at the end of the day, the people on social media are people, right? And you don't just go up to people in real life and just be like, hey, buy my book. You talk to them a little bit. You engage with them. You get to know them. And I think that's important because, you know, a lot of people, especially a lot of businesses, don't really take the effort of trying to get to know their customers or anything. They just kind of just jump in and just advertise and I don't think that's the right tactic at least not for me it could be for other people but not for me at the moment how do you get out of moments of being uninspired that's a tough one so a lot of what I do is that I write down a lot of the ideas I have when I'm inspired the thing about video making is that it's pretty hard to make one video so making more than one video a week is difficult so what I like to do is I like to write all my ideas down on a whiteboard or in my notes and have it for later. So moments of being uninspired, I work on the stuff that I thought was great then. Um, if I really don't have any ideas, I'll like research something or read a book or um, look at something else. Try to get my mind off of being stressed out about trying to find an idea. I feel like ideas come to you when you let it rather than you chasing it. So if you're uninspired, just kind of, you know, take some time to yourself, read a book. Uh, have some coffee, talk to friends, you know, the ideas will come to you. They come from real life and they'll come to you. Do you think you made the right move by doing what you love? I don't know. <laughs> I know that's not the answer you're looking for, but um, there's a lot of times, like, I'm happy. And I think if that's an indication of whether I did the right thing, then yes, I absolutely, I think I did the right thing. Um, I mean, I don't know from a financial standpoint, I don't know if this was a great move. Um, like it probably, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I it, only time will tell, but in terms of right now and how I feel right now, I think I definitely did make the right move because I am happier and I feel like, you know, I'm enjoying what I do. I'm, I'm excited to wake up every morning and get to work. What's your favorite board game? That's a fantastic question. Here's the thing. I don't think it comes down to what's your favorite board game. I think it really depends on who you play with. And I actually have a few friends, uh, well me and Sela have a few friends, who we play board games with all the time and they are the best people to play board games with. They could bring any game over. It could be the worst game, it could be the best game, but it doesn't matter. As long as we're playing with them, it's a lot of fun. So, you know, I don't think it matters what kind of board game I enjoy playing. I think what matters is playing with the people you enjoy. But also my favorite board game is Mysterium. I've only played it once, but I love playing it. I own it. Nobody wants to play with me and it's really upsetting. Why did you decide to get married? So I'll start by saying this. I actually told myself I was going to get married or start looking to get married after the age of 30. And at the age of 24, I got married. So it wasn't really a thing about time or anything like that. It was just that I found the right person and it made sense. I know a lot of people think like, oh, you know, I should start thinking about marriage at this point and I should start, you know, they try to map it out. But the thing is, is that with, with life, you can't map out stuff, right? Um, I met Selwa when I was young and the thing is, is that just for many reasons, we decided to get married. And it just made sense. It made sense at the time. And I know my younger self would probably be like, but you're supposed to wait until 30. But the thing is, is that when you find the right person, you don't wait, you just do it. What drives you and your work? When I was younger, I always wanted to be an actor because I loved seeing characters on television, in movies, uh, in plays. Like I just love the character dynamic, understanding the flaws of people, the strengths of people, how they react in certain situations. And I think, when I'm making films, and I'm making films of people, I think that's what really brings me close to the project. I remember my first gig was a surprise proposal, and I hadn't met the people at all until the day of the shoot. And just even witnessing that, witnessing how they react, their moments of love that they had, that was just so beautiful, and it was just so amazing. And I thought, you know, like, it was just such an amazing thing to capture on camera. And I think, I just think it's beautiful.
right? People are beautiful. What was your most ambitious project? It was actually this script I wrote called Wise Guys. It was a story about, um, like it was a mafia story that I wrote when I was younger and it was basically gonna be a feature length film and we just finished filming um, one of the short films uh, that I wrote a few, a few years before so at this time we were very confident and we went in guns blazing you know we had auditions we we had auditions we got crew and and it all seemed to kind of just fall apart at one time and it was just maybe we just didn't have the time invested but it was a very ambitious project and it failed and I, I know it had a pretty bad effect on me I remember being very upset about it but you know this is what happens in this industry like things just fail it, 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 people flop and all that and, and that's okay you learn from it I did end up publishing the script and I'll leave the link to the script if you want to read it slash buy it you can just go in the link below and you can check it out it's a pretty good script I'm very proud of it and maybe one day I might bring it to the silver screen but at this point I don't know on a scale of 1 to 10, how productive do you feel on average with your new job? This number fluctuates, it goes from like 1 to 10, kind of like on a scale. I actually, like there's some days where I feel incredibly productive, like I feel like I'm at a 10 and I can get everything done. But there are some days where I feel like I didn't get anything done at all and I just kind of just sat on the couch and did absolutely nothing. Um, and I think it's a balance of that, right? Like some days I do actually have a lot of work and some days I can kind of push my work until later and don't really have much to do. But like now I'm trying to make myself feel more productive and get more stuff done so that I can focus on myself. Like I made this decision to go full time, not only just to run my own business, but to make myself a better person by reading more, by working out more and doing all this stuff. And I feel like if I'm not working, the success part also comes from those other things. And I think that's important as well. Do you have any learnings or regrets from the past few weeks with your new company? Yes, absolutely. And there's a lot I've learned from running my own business. Like for example, a lot of times when you're running your own business, you get in your own head and you think, oh, I can't do this, I'm not good enough. There's so many other people better than me and I just won't be able to do this. And I think, I don't know, I feel like maybe I'm not the only one that has to deal with this, but I feel like this is a very common thing where business people have to worry about whether they can continue on, especially if you're young, because you know, there's that whole um, amateur complex that we all have. And I feel like, you know, that's half the battle of running your own business or being an artist, is that you are comparing yourself constantly to other people. And I think, that's the thing that I've struggled with, but it's also something that I've learned from, that I feel like you can't do that. You have to be like a horse in a horse race, right? You have to be blind from the competition and just do your best work, right? And I think if I had to give a tip to anybody who's starting their own business, before you start your business, just write down somewhere, whether it's on a, uh, like a whiteboard or a piece of paper, write down why you're starting this business what's your like your goal your mission is it to make great videos or is it to make money or is it to kind of build a lifestyle that you want find out the core reason why you're doing all this because if you can narrow down that core reason and focus on it you can really kind of um really develop yourself and and you know stay on the right path right because if it's more of a financial thing, then you know you have to set more financial goals and do whatever it is to make money. But if it's something else, then you know that the priority should be a little bit different. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned from this business. Regrets? Nothing yet. But they'll probably come soon. And with that, I'm gonna end this video. Thank you so much, everybody, for submitting your questions. I don't think, well, I definitely couldn't have done this video without your questions, but um, I do love answering your questions. So if you ever have any questions or if you ever wanna reach out or anything, please feel free to send me a personal message, comment on one of my videos. I wanna talk to you guys, I wanna answer your questions. Even if you just wanna let me know about something you're working on, please just send me a message. I definitely wanna hear from you guys. And uh, thank you for watching so much. And I will see you in the next one, I guess.